Okay, I want to point something out um, about drawing position. I've set up my subject and my drawing surface so that I can see both without having to move very much. And I think that's important. You don't want to block your view of what you're trying to draw. You need to be able to look at it frequently. And you want to make it as easy as possible to look back and forth. So if you have your drawing surface pointing sideways right at your subject, that works very well rather than trying to look over the table or having to bend and look around the table, which doesn't work so well. Okay, we're going to look at the skull now, which is kind of an ovoid shape with a bit of a cylindrical um, aspect to it. So, as I did with the earlier drawing, I'm going to start off with a ovoid shape. I'm going to go both ways with my arm so that I can counteract the fact that some of my muscles are stronger than others. And this time I'm going to develop some of the shadow first. Right, so the brightest area of the skull right here where the light is striking it it's from the above and the side. Right? And then the skull curves out towards us. So the light rays have to go straight. They can't curve around into the shadow area. So this will, for me, represent the back of the skull coming toward the front. And then down here, there's a bit of a cylindrical shape, the jaw. So I'm going to bring some shadow down here. I want to stop at this point and just check my uh, proportions. So let me go right to the skull this time. Uh, the widest part through the eye sockets is this wide if I put my fingers around it. And that's... Um, that's the height of the skull. I now have my finger on top of the skull, and the other one's right around where the teeth are. Right? So the width through the eyes is the same as from the top of the skull to the teeth. Right? So this is right about where the teeth will end up in my drawing. There's the width, top of the skull to the teeth. Okay. okay. Now, I'm going to Notice that the shape is a little bit different from the ovoid we drew with the styrofoam head model. There's a upper jaw, a cheekbone, right, an eye socket, right, a forehead, the top of the skull. Right. So I'll add some of those features. The brightest part is right here. So I want don't want a heavy dark outline. In fact, I think I want almost no outline at all. I want a very light edge here, soft, thin. There's some light spilling on the back of the skull. So I also want this to be pretty light, thin. And then the skull kind of curves around here. Right opposite the eye sockets is where the back of the skull ends. There's a little notch. And that brings me to the jawbone, which angles down. This is a sort of a cylindrical shape. Right? So you could think about this as a big ellipse down here. And then the upper and lower jaw with the teeth here, right? Come down as the side of the ellipse. Now this has a lot of light on it as well, so I'm going to lighten this whole part of the drawing up. Again, I don't want a heavy dark outline here.
I do want to get some darker shadows going. So now I'm going to look back at the ovoid part of the skull up here. So I think the darkest shadow I see kind of wraps here, which again makes sense. Remember the rounded shape, smooth continuous curve. The light is traveling in straight lines, right? So it can't go over here, but because it is a curve, there's a gentle transition from dark to light. So I'm going to experiment with um, different strategies for getting some of that gradual transition. Soft edge to the shadow. And over here I have this cylindrical area. So on a cylinder I know that I would have a dark shadow here, just a little past the widest part of the cylinder, the part that comes closest to me, and then I'd have a gradual transition. Okay, so I'll apply that, what I know about the light and shadow here on the cylinder, as I did up here on the ovoid shape. Okay. So that'll give me a kind of a general idea of where to put the light and the shadow on the skull. And then, of course, there's all the features I would probably want to include. So let's see if we can put them in and think of them as smaller versions of these um, basic shapes. For example, the nose, right? It's sort of like a cylinder, but not an up and down cylinder. It's kind of like a cylinder here tilted and projecting out from this part of the skull. So let's look at an ellipse or an ovoid here. Okay. And then we're going to have a side of the cylinder going back this way. So now if we apply what we know about light and shadow, we know that this part of the cylinder has to be shaded. Mm -hmm. In this case, the cylinder is open, so there's going to actually be some shadow inside, which might go in there. This cylinder fits into a reverse ovoid, the eye socket here. Okay. So you could think of a reverse ovoid as like the inside of a bowl or a cave. Okay. There's another reverse ovoid here. Okay. The cheekbones are kind of like the front surfaces of a box. So we have light striking them until they turn. Now, these cheekbones are not straight up and down. In fact, they're tipped a bit. So they do need a little bit of a shadow. Remember when we drew the left side of the box? And the underside, just like the underside of the box, needs a bit of a shadow. This is where you're cheekbone turns from the front of your face to the side. There's also a turn here. So now I can start to put a little bit of the details that I see of light and shadow.
And down here we've got some teeth that create a little bit of complexity in the light and shadow. just draw an impression of them. Finally, um, I might want to differentiate the jaws. There's a space between the upper jaw and the lower jaw. So there's some of the basics of the skull. So I hope we can see how the, um, knowing the basic pattern of light and shadow on the ovoid, on the cylinder, can help us to see and draw the more complex skull. But the skull still has uh, aspects of these basic forms.